<laughs> hope everybody's having a good summer and all that. Man, I've been getting some sun. I tell you what. Um, all right. Okay. I'm going to try not to say um a million times. I'm going to try. But if I do, I'm sorry. Not sorry. Whatever. Anyways. <clears throat> so I listed a whole bunch of tag packs. Well, envelope tag whatever packs uh, in my shop just a little while ago. And I think there's 24 altogether. So I did want to kind of run through those and show you guys what's in them. Uh, and, you know, mainly that's because I, this is the only way that I advertise, you know, and it, I, I apologize. Let me, let me just say, I feel super bad that I don't do more craft with me's or process videos or live streams and all that kind of stuff lately. I do. I feel terrible about it. And it's not that I don't want to. I do. It's just finding time to do it and actually finding not so much the time, but the focus to do it. It has been a struggle for me. So, you know, because anyway, it's complicated, but I do have, I do have a list. <laughs> I have a list of videos, the snaps. I want to do a kind of a run through on how to set snaps because I know it seems simple, but you know, if you don't know how to do it, then, you know, I think um, some people would appreciate that. So I want to do that. I want to do the bigger oversized like string uh, envelope, altered envelope thingy. And um, I also want to do a video on doing some writing boards that you can insert in journals and different ways that you can embellish those and make them. Um, and just some considerations about making a writing board um, because I do have some in some of these packs. But um, anyway, so just, you know, thanks for understanding you guys. I appreciate it. A um, couple things I want to say about Etsy. Okay. I just want to get this out um, because it's, it's been on my mind. First of all, I appreciate Etsy. I do. And I would, you know, if you think about it, there really isn't any other marketplace that offers what they offer. Okay. Um, Etsy is, I should have made notes because I know I'm going to just ramble, but I, I, maybe I should give you guys something to look at while I ramble. Um, Etsy is trying to be competitive in a market, in a world market where all these like huge retailers offer free shipping. Okay. And a lot of them offer free shipping at $35. And if you think about it, uh, I think that that's the right thing to do. I really do. And it, and it, sh it, it should be, it should be available because it's competitive. And if Etsy is going to be advertising um, that they're going to be, you know, offering free shipping options, then I think that we as sellers need to step up to that. And I feel like we need to, we need to, we need to, you know, support that because that's how Etsy is going to continue to stay strong. Etsy isn't, isn't satisfied with just, you know, remaining where they are. Like they want to get bigger and stronger and, and that doesn't only benefit Etsy, okay? It benefits everybody that sells their stuff on Etsy. And I'm sorry if I sound like I'm being, you know, crappy about it. But, you know, I appreciate Etsy. And and there, there really isn't any other way that I could have gotten my work seen by the sheer number of people that have seen my work and purchased my work in every corner of the globe, okay? Um, so I just, you know, I appreciate it. So I just want to tell you guys if, in case, and, you know, cause we're hearing a lot of negative stuff about this free shipping thing. First of all, it's not mandatory. Okay. Nobody has to do it. You've always had the option to pay to promote your stuff on Etsy. Everybody has that option. If you want your stuff to show up in searches higher above, you know, other people, you can do that. You can pay to do, to promote your stuff. Um, I personally feel like I like, I don't think that that's fair. Okay. I don't think that 
we should have to pay to promote items that we're selling on Etsy, considering we're already paying just to sell stuff on Etsy, right? Like we shouldn't have to pay to promote the stuff that we have on Etsy. I think that uh, search results should should have always been based on your customer service, your feedback rating, your uh, tenure on Etsy, uh, maybe the number of sales that you have, um, you know, how you, how you deal with uh, issues, you know, your return policies, just all kinds of stuff like that, like on your ratings and your merit. I feel like that should give you some precedent over, you know, somebody who is just paying to, you know, promote their stuff. So anyway, that's just my opinion. So what Etsy did was they said, okay, if you will offer a 35 a $35 uh, or more purchase, you know, free shipping option in your shop, we will promote your shop. We'll promote your shop for free, you know, and potentially even on television and things like that, you know, and, and that doesn't, that doesn't cost you anything. So, you know, I've always had free shipping at $100. So now I'm offering it at $35. Um, you know, sellers are freaking out like they have to raise all their prices by, you know, $7.50 or whatever, you know, to cover the cost of shipping and that Etsy's trying to trick people or something like that, you know, and that's not really the case, okay? Like that, I think that that's being really misunderstood. Like you don't have to increase the price of every item by the cost of shipping. So the thing is, is like, it's different for, it's different for different shops, okay? A shop that only has like two or three items in their shop, um, you know, maybe that's not the best option. You know what I mean? Or a, sh a seller that, you know, only makes custom orders. Like um, they don't even have anything in their shop really that is selling right now. Like, or, you know, then there's other shops that have thousands of items in their shop, like craft supplies and stuff. You know, so every seller on Etsy has a different scenario. Like, so that seller needs to decide what's best for them. And if you're a shop that already offers free shipping at a certain level or just across the board, then it doesn't even make any difference to them, you know, but that, that seller may make enough money that they can afford to promote their items you know, on a daily basis. And so their stuff just shows up at the top of search results anyway. You know, I mean, it gets so complicated, you guys. I just want to say that I'm on Etsy side, okay? And I know that <laughs> some people are going to get super, like, pissed about that maybe. But, you know, really, it, 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 I feel like maybe it's not a perfect solution, but I think it's a step in the right direction. And, um I just feel like we need to try to think positively about changes, you know, because it's really easy to just complain about things and to just be negative and say, well, yeah, well then, you know, I have to raise all my prices and we're trying to lie to the customer and say that it's free shipping and blah, 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 when actually we're just raising all our prices. That's up to you whether you raise your prices or not, you know, that's up to you. It's a choice. So if you want to offer $35 free shipping, then, you know, you need to build that into your pricing structure, you know, and that does not mean raising all your prices by X number of dollars. It just doesn't, you know, it, 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 it levels out across the board, you know, so here's what I did. This is what I did. I did not raise all my prices by the cost of shipping. What I did was, and I'm offering free shipping at $35 and I've always offered it at a hundred. So, you know, and I've always factored that into my pricing. So now I'm shipping more stuff for free, but hopefully I'll be selling more stuff too. So, you know, it, 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 it's a risk, but you know, I feel like it's already, it's helping my shop. So that's what I care about. Anyways, what I did was I raised my prices 5% across the board. Okay. So that is absolutely still less than you would be paying if you were paying for shipping, okay, um, as a separate item, right? If you think about shipping as an item that you're paying for, you also have to think about the sales tax and all that kind of stuff. 
So you're paying 5% more than I would normally charge on items and you're going to get your stuff shipped for free. And most of the time it's going to be priority shipping. So anyways, I, I should have, like I said, I should have made a list of things that I wanted to say about it. But, you know, if you're complaining about Etsy and their policy and all that stuff, maybe like research it a little bit and look into it and try to have an open mind and maybe look at it from different perspective. Okay. Because I just feel like being negative about it, it's not helpful. It's not helpful to the customers. It's not helpful to, to sellers. And, you know, we need to try to support Etsy a little bit too, I think. You know, just like YouTube, it's like I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to do what I do if it wasn't for YouTube. So anyways, that's my rant. So, OK, how long was that? Oh, my gosh. Ten minutes. OK, <clears throat> tag packs. So these are actually mostly envelopes and well, envelopes and tags. OK, let me get these in order. Um, so there's three, well, three or four different kind of styles of sets here. Um, first off, I've got the ones that have the tall uh, policy envelopes. So these are going to have, oh, I think they're like 18 pieces or something in each one. Um, and you know, I don't, I don't even need to say, but it's all, it's all handmade, altered vintage papers and, you know, except for the policy envelope. But um, lots of handmade stuff in here. So, um, and to be honest, this is almost as much as I would put in a journal. It might even be more than what I would normally even put into a journal that I made. So I definitely wouldn't have put these in a journal. So anyway, so let me just go through what's in here, okay? So I did a little craft with me video making one of these envelopes or altering one of these envelopes. And um, so this is kind of how they wound up. I did 12 of them all together. So you're going to get a tall tag. I use that uh, We Are Memory Keepers. Um, what do they call it? Mm, I can't remember what they call it. But anyways, <laughs> I got that punch that does that. So you get a tall tag in there. And there's no picture of the tall tag in the listing uh, because I forgot. <laughs> I forgot to take a picture of it. So it'll be a surprise, I guess. Anyways, um, so then you get four more little tags in these. So there's a pocket. Okay, let me just take it all out. I think this came from, um, oh no, this is actually a business card that I got in a big pack of ephemera. But anyways, it's like, I thought it was really pretty. It's a, it's a reproduction. I printed it, but it's like a perfume maker from Paris. Anyways, it's kind of cute. So, um. There's a pocket there, or a tuck spot there, and a pocket there. These are just some little tags, little ticket tags that I made. I went collage crazy one night and just collage like a whole bunch of 12 by 12 craft paper with scraps. Um, so there's a pocket there, and then a tuck spot there, okay? So you get four tags, and on the back, it's it's plain, so you could actually use that as a journaling spot or whatever. And then there's one of these envelopes. So these, some of them have a magnet closure, some have a string closure, kind of like that, and then some have a wraparound button closure, okay? So these, uh, these don't have the pockets in them, like the ones I did on video. These are just intended like for writing, okay? But there's no reason that you couldn't just slip a tag in there. You know, I mean, it'll, it'll stay. So, um, or you could add a pocket if you wanted to, or even maybe just a paper clip. You could just paper clip something in there if you needed to. And then, of course, a tab and a little, and a couple little charms. There's actually a button on this one. And then I did these envelopes. These are just like, well, not just like, these are very similar to the ones that Wendy made on one of her older videos. Uh, not that old, but like, I don't remember. I didn't look at the date, but um, <laughs> it's not a brand new video. Wendy's journal adventures I'm talking about. Anyway, so she did these little envelopes kind of, um, I don't know what you would call it, but anyways, it's like a little folio type of thing. And then, but she did a little like notepad up here. Like she stitched on some coffee dyed paper and stuff up here to add a little notepad. Um, I just 
you know, didn't want to do that. Mostly because I was doing the eyelet and I don't know, I just thought it would be difficult to stitch around it. But um, anyway, so you get um, another tag inside and then a couple of the little ticket tags. So these have a little eyelet with some twine on them. Um, and this is actually something that I'm working on trying to get put into a digital download uh, page pack thing um, from this old, old uh, elementary reader. It's such a pretty little book. Anyway, so these just have some collaging. This one is made out of the cover of some sheet music. So I always love the covers of sheet music because especially like from the 20s and 30s, they're just so pretty. Anyways, okay, so a little Tracy Fox tag. Anyway, and then some more tags. So this this pack actually has two with the acetate. Um, so I printed on the acetate. I glued a book page onto some either scrapbook paper or avocado dyed paper and then layered the acetate image over the top and stitched around it. So, um, yeah, so that's how those turned out. And I just love them. I think they're so pretty. And then, you know, I'm just charm crazy lately. I'm just charming. It's just so charming. Um, anyways, little little buttons and things like that. I broke into my box of antique buttons. So most of these little buttons that I've been using are mother of pearl. So anywho, there's another one of those pages from the, the old reader. And then <clears throat> you'll get three more of the little ticket tags. And I put a bunch of these in here, you guys, just because I made a gazillion of them. So that's why. Um, and then, you know, some smaller ones. Okay, so that is the set that there. So there's 12 of these in my shop, um, and they're all numbered. I hope I didn't screw up the numbers. I hope I'm not saying um a gazillion times. I'm trying not to. Anyway, and I'm sorry about my rant about Etsy, you guys, but you know, it's just it's just hard to listen to it sometimes. All right, so 12 of those. This one has um, kind of a blue sort of theme. Um, ah, I said it. Dang it. Okay. It's when I'm thinking, you know, like I'm trying to think of the right word to say or something. I don't know. It just means that my brain is working. All right, so there's 12 of that type of pack with the tall envelope, okay? And there's lots of pictures, so you can see what you're going to get. You will be able to see it. Okay, and then I did eight packs like this with the writing board, okay? So it looks like it's a much larger pack, but it's really not. It's just because it has the big writing board, okay? So these are pages from a Chatterbox book from, I don't know, like 1880 or something, okay? So I just glued the page onto a piece of, scrapbook paper and then just did some collaging of writable paper paper that you can write on on the back i have this whole book of ledger that is so brittle there's no way i can fold it so the only way i can use it is to glue it onto stuff but um but anyways i love it and then just some quilt top uh fabric some old vintage kind of scrappy fabric layers and stuff as like a tab on the side i didn't add any charms on these believe it or not so you get a, a writing board and then you get one of the envelopes with the, you know, the writing paper on the inside that's just collaged on the inside. And then another one of these little guys. And these, I actually added a little either, some of them have, hold on, some of them have a little framed picture like this. Some of them have a little framed picture, okay? And some of them have a little um, thread spool label. But um, if you get one that has a little picture, it's somebody, it's one of my old family pictures. So, like, that's my grandma right there, okay? And then her sisters. So, anyway, <laughs> I just wanted to tell you that because I use my, my family pictures a lot if I use images of, like, vintage images. I, I try to use those. 
So, and then there's just a little tuck spot on the cover. Okay. And then you get three tags inside. So, and these are going to vary, but you'll see in the pictures, um, you know, what they are. Okay. And yeah, so this is pretty much just like how Wendy made these um, without the little notepad inside. And I love using these covers from the sheet music. So it's just, a, I think it's just a good way to use those. Um, and then four other tags. So just different. Um, these are just like collage tags. And then the acetate tags. And then a couple of the book page tags. Okay. Uh, one, this one has a charm and this one has the fabric. Okay. So those are the other type of bundle that's there and there's eight of these all together okay eight 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 all right so that's number b8 this is b7 you know they're all they're all different but you'll see okay and then i did four more oh boy did i lose the great i lost the number off of this one I think it's C1, though. Hmm. What happened to my number? Let me see. Yeah. No, it's C4. <laughs> okay. C4. Isn't that like some kind of explosive or something? Anyway, so these packs are all different. These, uh, these last ones. Oh, here it is. Okay. So this is C1. All right. So this is C4. So you'll get this envelope. Okay. With the little, little tuck spot on the front and then, you know, tags inside. It's the bigger tag and then two ticket tags. Okay. And then you get, in this pack, you get two kind of large <laughs> ticket tags and then two little ones. You'll get this tag with the leaves. This is from the reader. And then this guy with the beetle. This is an acetate. You can kind of see it. I think it's, yeah. Anyway, it's got the, it's printed on the acetate and then layered on top of that ledger paper that I have in my shop from that really old ledger. It's really cool because it's kind of pink. It's almost the same color as uh, avocado dyed paper. So um, anyway, so there's that one. And then this tag, this is a vintage uh, field guide. I just tore the image of the bird off. And then tall tag. And, you know, I stitch, I go crazy with the sewing machine. And then you get two of these other tags. These are made from the Chatterbox book pages also. Um, one with a flower theme and then this one with a bird theme. And I'm going to be making some more of those because I have some other books that have similar type of uh, imagery. So like Victorian, I guess. I'm sort of getting back into that style again. I'm going to find that number so I and put it somewhere visible. There we go. All right, so that's C4. This is C1. So this one, you're going to get this tag. This is, I made this months and months ago when I was putting out some journals where I had the Mooka girls on the front. If anybody remembers those. Um, just some cool vintage fabric from Bridget. Thank you, Bridget. I love this fabric. And um, this little mini envelope. I made a whole bunch of these. And this is the last one I had left. So I put two little tags in there. Little tickets. And this has a magnet closure. And then this little bee. Little honey bee tag. And this envelope. It's got a little tuck spot there. I put a little tiny ticket in there. And... You get this little pansy on acetate, layered on ledger paper and avocado paper. A couple of ticket tags inside. 
And obviously, you know, there's a charm clanking around. So it's that little hand symbol. I forget what that's like a Hindu kind of thing. Anyway, and then this uh, altered envelope, or actually it's not an altered envelope. I made the envelope out of book pages um, with the button wraparound closure and a couple of charms. This does not stay on there. So there's some mushrooms on there. Anyway, so that is C1. Okay. And like I said, lots of pictures on the listing. And if you ever, you know, if you're looking at something in my shop or whatever, and you want me to take some more pictures of it and send them to you, I will do that for you. You know, I don't, I don't mind that. I do that with, uh, with eBay sellers all the time. Um, okay. So this is set C2. Okay. It's another uh, chatterbox book page. And I guess this could be a writing uh, board in a smaller journal, you know, if that's what you wanted to do. And then this little notebook with the magnet closure. It's just a little scrappy kind of junky little notebook, you know, um, with some off cuts and dictionary pages and things like that. And then this tag with the acetate. Do you see it? It's got like the matte. One side is like matte and the other side is shiny. And so some of them I put the matte side on the outside. Um, and then this is just like basically a floating pocket that you could, you know, glue into another journal or into one of your journals. Or you could just paper clip it into a journal if you wanted to. Um, but I put a little, a little couple little tags in there. And then this is from a series of envelopes that... Well, I guess it's not really an envelope. It's more of just like a journaling card. But anyways, I made these quite a while ago. Uh, all collaged up. I did not ink this one. I'm, you know, lately I've been either inking everything or not inking anything. And so, you know, some of the stuff is inked and distressed. And then other stuff is just distressed. <laughs> it's, it's not inked. Anyways, I love this one with the, um, with the thistle. Okay, and then this one, oh my gosh, I love this envelope because I love this cover. It's just, I don't know, there's something about those sheet music covers. They're just so soft and, you know, like you can tell that somebody really used it a lot, you know. Anyway, um, so you get this tag inside there with the bees. It's got bumblebees. This is one of the acetate tags. And then a couple little ticket tags. And I'm only going through these last four, like each one, because they're all different. Okay. So that's just so you know. Nah. Before you close these, you got to kind of make sure that the charm is going off to the side. And you know, you can always take the charms off of the, these things too, if they irritate you put them on something else so and that little ticket tag okay so this is number c2 and then i'll show you c3 and then i think that's it <clears throat> yeah i don't know that whole etsy thing is just Seems like it's caused quite a ruckus. <clears throat> Anyways. Um, okay, so this one's got this kind of, it's a little bit bigger. It's made out of sheet music. This envelope. Authentic Denison label on the front, just saying. <laughs> and then this tag with the sweet peas. Oops, sorry, was I out of camera there? Off frame or out of frame or whatever. Um, I love these little tiny Denison labels. They're so cute. So you get a couple little ticket tags in there too. Little honeybee charm. And then this tag with the acetate and then some math book pages behind it. A little antique button. And another tag made from the Chatterbox book, Lucy Takes Care of the Flowers. 
so that goes on there so I don't get confused. A little ticket tag, another ticket tag, and then this one is the acetate also on top of some book paper on craft paper. Okay, another little antique button on that one. This is another image from the old reader on avocado paper. And then this is just a, um, this is a pocket. I made a whole bunch of these to use on the inside covers of some journals. And I had a few left over. So, you know, these are awesome. You could, you could glue this into another journal. You could add a tab or something on the side if you want. And you could just tuck it into your journal. Um, but it is a pocket actually, like it has a back on it. So, you know, you could staple that or sew that closed if you wanted or whatever. I don't know. I just, I just think they're useful. Anyway, so that is C3. Okay. So the rest of them are, they're all numbered and there's pictures of each one. There's 24 new listings. So, um, I was pretty careful <laughs> to make sure that I stayed organized while I was doing that. And, um, yeah. So go check those out, you guys. And, uh, don't forget, free shipping. <laughs> and, um, yeah. And I still have children's book pages left, packs left. So if you're interested in one of those, just send me an email. And I'll tell you what, if you buy one of these, um, one of these kits or these packs, I will take, uh, if, I've, if I can ship it together, with the, um, like, so if you want one of those children's book page packs and you want like an envelope pack, I'll take $5 off the children's book pack. Okay. Book page pack. So I'll take $5 off. So they're normally 35. Um, so I'll bring it down to $30 if you buy one of these at the same time, or, you know, just send me the email and say, Hey, you know, I bought a page or an envelope pack, but I want one of the children's packs. So I'll, when I send you the invoice, I'll take $5 off. If you already bought one of the children's page packs and you buy one of these, just let me know and I'll give you a, um, a, a credit, okay? I'll, you know, I'll either do it on Etsy or PayPal or something. But I'll give you five bucks back, okay? So let me know and, um, yeah, stay in touch, you guys. I love you and um, I'm getting nice and tan, huh? I'm going to go see if I can get a little bit of sun here in just a minute. So, yeah. I love you guys. Take care and I will see you soon. Bye for now.